Hi, I'm Nava Hefetz, Rabbi Nava Hefetz, Education Director of Rabbis for Human Rights. Uh, in the framework of our uh, department, we are trying to reach the Israeli public, the Israeli society, in order to bring a rabbinic and humanistic voice uh, concerning human rights, violation of human rights in Israel. We operate in uh, various fields among uh, pre-army academies, a little bit with the army, and mainly with students, because this is the next generation of leaders of Israel. We have developed a curriculum based on the Declaration of Independence of the State of Israel. We compiled it as a Talmud, in Tal Talmudic style, and we're trying to have uh, a dialogue uh, with all the generations of uh, scholars and sages and uh, leaders uh, that uh, wrote about Jewish values concerning human beings. Um, in the declaration, we are trying to show that uh, Judaism on one hand and uh, human rights and democracy can be combined together and that uh, there is no contradiction. Of course, in Jewish sources, we can find all kinds of voices, racist voices and voices that try to separate between people, but there are also a lot of humanistic voices and we would like these voices to emerge and uh, to be heard in the Israeli society, especially as rabbis, because most rabbis in Israel are bringing a different, um, a, di a different discourse. How many people have you, has Rabbis for Human Rights in Israel taught over the years through its education programs? Thousands. And can you tell me a little bit about um, specifically the pre-military academies and the, the, the soldiers that you work with? What, what is unique about those programs? Okay, there is a phenomenon today in the Israeli society that uh, an important number of young Israelis who just graduate from high school postpone the army and they go to study and to do some volunteering work in pre-academy uh, centers. Those centers are located mainly in Kibbutzim, from Mayan Baruch in the north, in the upper Galilee, and Kfar Anasi, up to uh, the south of the Negev, the college of Zdeboker. And uh, we're teaching in nine pre-army academies. There are almost 30 that are mixed religious Israelis and secular Israelis. Um, and these young Israelis are taking this year before the army as a preparation for the army. But what is happening inside these academies is that they are studying philosophy and uh, Zionism and uh, human rights which is our course, it's a U course, it's not, you know, one, once in a while. Um, they study leadership, uh, empowerment, and uh, they are learning about the Israeli society. So in this framework of the academies, um, we are coming in, uh, in a year course, but also we are trying to bring other organizations like Combatants for Peace, uh, Breaking the Silence, uh, B'Tselem, but it is our, uh, we actually became some kind of consultant to those uh, head of academies. Uh, we're in a very good relationship with them. And besides the teaching or the studying, uh, they're doing with us uh, a tour, uh, a day that is dedicated to Jerusalem. Once we called it the envelope of Jerusalem. But now we take Jerusalem as a microcosm of the entire Israeli society where all the tensions uh, appear in Jerusalem. Religious and versus uh, a secular, Sephardi versus Ashkenazi, Palestinians and Jews, and all the tensions are in the air, on the ground, not in the air. 
And uh, we start this day, it's, it's a day of uh, 10 hours. We, we started with a, a study session of three hours on fences and barriers in, in, in the Jewish tradition. What is the approach of the uh, sources, the Jewish sources, toward fences, toward walls, uh, physical walls, and metaphoric walls? Uh, and then we go and we tour from Gilo in the south up to Sheikh Jarrah in the north. For the first time, these kids, these kids, these teenagers, um, meet with Palestinians. They meet with Palestinians in Silwan, and they we try to explain the absurdity of the home demolition there. Um, and then they meet with uh, Nasser, who was evacuated from his house in Sheikh Jarrah. And they study, really, they study every part of Jerusalem. And in the afternoon, uh, we're teaching them uh, social economy and uh, uh, social struggles in Israel and why they failed and what should be done in order that the next struggle uh, will not uh, fall apart. We are not dealing only with pre-army academies, but also with students. Mm. And we have two yeshiva, two uh, academies, rabbinic academies for students, one in Tel Aviv and one in, the, uh, in Jerusalem. 20 students in each study various topics of human rights and we are training them to become activists in the Israeli society. So they also, they volunteer. They do some uh, volunteering work uh, among various uh, human rights organizations. This year, we started a new program in the Sapir College that we call Citizens for Equality. And we recruited 10 Bedouin students and 10 Jewish students, both as citizens, both are meant to be equal in the state of Israel, but the gap is huge. And the Bedouin women that came to Sapir College to study are doing a revolution. Within the Bedouin society, they are fighting against their father, they are fighting against their brothers, their husbands, and they understand that in order to pull themselves out of poverty and of discrimination, they must exit to um, education, high education. And the Sapir College is really, they open the doors for, for these, uh, uh, these students. And they are going to study the status of women in the public sphere and in the religious sphere. Because the power that the men have over the women are through religion. And it's true in the Jewish society, and it is true in the Bedouin society, in the Palestinian society. Uh, so this is, uh, and they're, they're going to study together. Uh, for how long? For, two, for three years. And they get credits for their BA. And also they're studying, and they're going to undertake some projects, but together, Jews, Jewish uh, students, and Bedouin students, because there is such a, um, there are no contacts between the populations in Israel. We decided this year, uh, the new program, that it's going to be only for women, because I believe, I strongly believe that women have a special gift to, uh, to bring re reconciliation they have a, a tremendous role in bringing peace, but the men keep pushing them out of the public sphere. And we would like to empower women in order to become leaders of their communities and to, to, to take action.